Well, you certainly can't have the Chilco Lake experience without going out on Chilco Lake. So today is adventure day. We're gonna go see if we can find some glaciers. I think they'll be receded well up the mountain now. But there's an arm down there that should give us a good view anyways. It looks like we don't have the best weather during our stay here in the valley, but today's looking not bad. Should clear up and be nice and calm in the evening. The watercolor here is unbelievable, so good weather or not, we're just gonna enjoy being on it. The flies are buzzing round the death of your embrace. They know something I never did, something I couldn't face. definitely tell which way the wind typically comes from. <laughs> All the branches on these trees are pointing straight that way. As tropical as these waters look, Pretty far from the tropics here. Quite frosty. I'll go ahead and get this crossing done with. Shouldn't be too bad, just a couple nautical miles. The alcohol is born off and now I see clear. There was no spark, no light, and you were never sincere. Just made it to the other side. Decades ago there was glaciers that came right down into the water. Now they've receded well up the mountain. So we're not going to get a super close look, but we're going to go as close as we can and there's a big river coming into the lake down there straight from the glaciers. I want to see just how rich the color of the water is. our first look at the ice field here. And a little island. It looks like it might have an old cabin on it. Well, this thing has been sitting out here a while. definitely quite old. You can see the whole thing was built with an axe. Very cool. Ah, as soon as that sun goes down, you can start to see the true color of the water. Absolutely magnificent. Whoever built that cabin, I wonder why they chose the island. Not a whole lot of timber here. They'd have to be bringing it back and forth from the mainland all the time. Noise. So that's where we're heading, right to the very end. May as well get to her.
Celestial silt is already starting to get pretty dense in the water. Visibility is way down, but look at this color. Look at this tree, just giving her right through the rock, thriving. Yeah, definitely got to go under that bad cell. <laughs> Look at that. Mother nature. Woo. Looks like the perfect place for a grizzly to be hanging out. But for whatever reason, ain't no grizzly up in this hizzy. Is that too shallow? Can't quite tell. <laughs> What's too shallow? Look at how freaking nice it is in here. I do have to be careful. The visibility is maybe three feet, four feet, something like that. Can't risk a prop strike. So I'm not gonna go too far in there. Gotta save the prop strikes for when we get to the river. Just getting to the end of the channel. The water is everything I hoped it would be and more. But I'm not one to call anyone a liar. But the satellites of Google led me to believe there was supposed to be a far more substantial river coming in down here. Almost nothing. As far as glaciers go, talk about anticlimactic. With all the solo traveling I do, I know a thing or two about the absence of a climax. <laughs> Anyways, let's see what the drone can find. Well, the wind blew us all the way to shore, so we may as well hop out and take a look-see. So weird exploring such a big body of water that's not the ocean. Don't even have to worry about the tide coming in. Or going out. Can you believe this discovery? Pre-petrified wood. Where else in the world? Well, I suppose it's about time to mosey on out of here. Maybe see if we can find some wildlife. Western shoreline back. See, there's a cabin in here. I'm gonna pull the boat up and take a look. Can just barely see the top of it from the water, so let's go take a look. Oh, geez. Looks like no one's been here in a while. 
It also looks like a wintertime thing because there's a sled here. And either people or bears have totally ransacked it. Unfortunately. Neat little cabin though. Usually I'd close the door, but the floor is swelled up to the point where the door is now stuck open. What an awesome little spot though. Look at all this roofing on the ground here. And it's just bare on top. I wonder if this wind was strong enough to rip all that off there. Place is just bare now. There's one burnt log right there. Other than that, looks like everything here was blown over in some kind of terrible windstorm. That's about all there is to see. Let's keep making our way. originally planning around seems to have possibly arrived, which would be very nice. Chilco Lake is crazy beautiful, but being the largest high elevation freshwater lake in North America, it comes with its own weather pattern. And right now we seem to be in the midst of a several day windstorm that Honestly, I'm not really interested in sitting around to wait out. There's a ton of beautiful country out here. So I've just mapped out a route that I think should be pretty spectacular. It looks like quite the grueler. So I think this will also be either the truck's first big success or first possible failure. Either way, I'm excited to find out. As far as terrain, I have no concern. I know the truck can handle whatever we come across. It's height and width in particular that I'm concerned with because I think this, this road is probably gonna be very overgrown, but we'll tackle that when the time comes. I made the conscious decision of leaving the chainsaw out of this rig. Throughout the build, people sent me all kinds of nice stuff. A company out of Oregon called Axeman sent me this nice folding saw and this beautiful hand forged Swedish hatchet. These are taking the place of the chainsaw. We'll see if that was a good decision. <laughs> First impressions, very good. Thank you, Axeman. thinking nearly skinny enough getting a ton of scratches right now <laughs> I 
I'm four lowing so hard right now. I've been seeing some comments on these expedition truck videos, people asking what all these roads were made for out here in the middle of nowhere. Great question, because it takes a lot of work to build a road. In BC, especially this area, pretty much all of our back roads were built for resource extraction, either logging or mining. There's something left at the end of this road that we are in pursuit of. Not sure if the truck's gonna get that far, We'll make it at least up into the Alpine where we'll get some literally world-class views. Maybe take the bike from there. If the road's still doing all right, we'll definitely push forwards with the truck. Status update, rig's going fully aquatic. Just some monster puds out here. This was a radical one. This big tree was across and it was just a little bit too short for me to get under. So I had to, I tried to pull the truck up and go on the hood. I could only get the tip of it. So I had to climb up and along and then chop it from up there. Oh, didn't film any of it because I really had to be on my A game, but it's out of the way anyways. It's pretty radical. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tight one. <laughs> You'll have to excuse the amount of sawdust in my beard. Been sawing logs like a beaver. Good news though, just coming around the other side of the mountain, I can see the Tosico River down there. So we're close anyways. I think we're gonna make it. <laughs> don't really know which decision is the right one. The truck's doing fine. I can keep pushing through this thick alder, but I don't know when is a, the right time to turn around. If it gets a whole lot worse, I just don't have the time to brush cut all this way in here. It's a lot of kilometers. We're just gonna keep pushing forwards. I mean, certainly no place to turn around right now anyways. My favorite comment to read is when people say that watching the video brought tears to their eyes. I just spent the day chopping my way into this area. Don't know how much farther I'm going to make it, but where I just arrived could have brought tears to my eyes. up a tree and it's hanging right in front of the backup camera that's hilarious time to find somewhere to camp doesn't have to be fancy I just don't want to park on the road the chances of somebody else being out here is incredibly limited but just in case right here. But this just might be camp for the night. Oh, it's a boat launch. <laughs> Whoever's driving all this way just to launch a boat is somebody I want to meet. Talk about a freaking maniac. <laughs> Certainly not the easiest spot I've ever backed into, but it'll do. And like perfectly level. <laughs>
I had the most amazing night last night, literally just being where we are. This is the most beautiful and most remote place I've ever taken a rig. And surprisingly, it got here with a fair bit of ease. So to see all of the hard work of building this truck pay off is a reward that I don't even have words for. I hate to say it, but I need to end this episode here. <laughs> I've been studying the map and we're only about halfway as far as we need to be to head out on the e-bike. So we have a whole bunch more trail cutting to do and then the destination itself. So I'm gonna need a whole episode just for that. I hate to cut it here because I thought this was gonna be a one day or maybe two in and out. This is gonna be days up here, but it's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to take you guys along with me. I hope you're enjoying this Western series and I hope you're enjoying some of this high alpine remote content that I'm finally able to do with Destination Adventure. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And as always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, and I'll catch you on the next one.